living with the disease, right? Um, I, I, I not only grew uh, less uh, active, but I became, uh, I, I got, a, there was a lot of anger, a lot of frustration and depression also came along with all of that. And, and, and the selfish way when I started signing up for these is that if I happened to sign up for a clinical trial, that was the cure, right? I would be the first to get it. Right. So that was one motivation to do it. And the second motivation is that if I were to sign up for a clinical trial and it failed miserably and they cracked my head open and I and, and, and I died for some reason trying to receive this uh, the, uh, during the trial, it wouldn't have been so bad that I died. Wow. Right. Just because of what I was going through and, and I haven't experienced the other side of, of, of life living with the disease versus dreading it and living, trying to live my life without it, even though I've, even though I haven't, I can't get rid of it, you know? Um, so, you know, at that point, my mindset was, heck, if I died, that might be a good thing for me. Wow. You know, and if I didn't, Great, I'd be the first person to to get the cure if 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 uh, if that trial I was participating in was the cure. So it was very selfishly motivated. But I tell you what, what I learned during this whole process of signing up for clinical trials was that I learned. I, you know, my wife and I started to learn a lot about the disease itself. Um, we started to learn about how uh, you know how different studies were showing. Um, that there are ways to manage the disease and yes, it's not going to be perfect and that it's going to be hard work, but there are ways to manage. And when I participated in a trial of physical, ther physical forced therapy, um, I noticed that my, my, I would feel better after these sessions hmm. and that kind of took me to the next level. And because I felt better at, at these sessions, I would bring these physical activities back with me home. To my family, wow. I would, I would walk with them more after dinner, uh, and I'm spending more time with them. I would try to get as far as I can without my cane, and then you know, if I only get a block, so what? I get a block today. Maybe tomorrow I try to do a little bit more. Right. And every day I would go out, and every day I would try to get a little bit more, just a few more steps in, um, and a little bit more, and and you know, over time, I started doing longer and longer distances. And I started becoming more confident in the way that I walked. I started uh, leaving my cane at home and see how far I can get. And then when I felt more comfortable, of course, you know, along with changes in my diet and, and, and being more act, uh, physically active, I was starting to lose weight. So I started jogging. And then, and then as I kept going, I started running. Wow. And then next thing you know, I found myself running 5Ks. Um, Ultra and, marathons, ultra yeah, marathons. Can we say that word? Can we just uh, name it here? I know you're really humble, but I just want to say an ultra marathons too. Yeah, and so in 2012, I did my first 5K, and that was in April. Wow. But every time I would cross the finish line, I would tell myself, "I can do more. I can do more. Mm -hmm. I can do more." But I'm not going to go from a 5K to an ultra marathon. No, no. Um, but I can go from a 5K to a 10K. And every time that I cross the finish line, I push that goal out. I try to do a little bit more each day, every time. And ultimately, by October of 2012, I finished my first marathon. And then I just kept going, right? I started doing more. I started cycling. I started swimming. I started doing triathlons. And in 2015, I was able to do my first ultra marathon. Um, You know, and it just kept going. I, 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 I think, you know, this is in my bio, but, you know, I, I ended up doing an ultra marathon, 16 marathons, 105 half marathons. Okay. Okay. Can you, I was about to ask you because I remember the speech and it's not in your website. It's not in your bio. I'm like, when I received this, I'm like, he's so humble. I'm going to, I'm gonna just going to bring the spirituality now house down with this. Tell us how many, how many you did, because you know, our, our podcast, we have a lot of athletes and, and a lot of people that are like high performance listening. So just, just please, just for us, for a moment, tell us how much of that you did. 
Well, you know, since 2012, right? That's nine, nine short years. Uh, mm-hmm. Since 2012, as I mentioned, there's one ultra marathon. I've done 16 marathons, 105 half marathons, uh, triathlons, um, countless triathlons, 5Ks, 10Ks. I became the first person with Parkinson's on record to complete a 100-mile bike ride in under five hours. Oh. Um I, I, I ran in, uh, oh, I've competed in American Ninja Warrior. You said nine times, but it's actually five times the last five seasons. Oh, I've competed five seasons. American, okay. Yeah. yeah. Five seasons on America, the last five on American Ninja Warrior. Um, you know, I, and you mentioned it already is a world record for burpees, a world record for, for push ups. I mean, who um, knows world record for burpees? Like you're, I, 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 I hear the, hear the word burpees. I'm like, you know, wh- where's my exit? <laughs> and you are doing this for world records. Well, you didn't do it for that you did it for your own training and healing but yeah it's unbelievable to me you are a testament of the human will in action of finding a way and actually of offering you like what you said you offer yourself to science you are offering yourself as a living embodiment open you know open vulnerable into the community of not only parkinson's disease but Jimmy, also for all of us that, uh, some of us that don't have Parkinson's, you know, I cannot move a hand and a leg and all of that stuff, but, well, I can move my leg, but, but it's, it, you, you really are an invitation for us to not only push the boundaries, but walk outside of our belief systems. I really feel this is one of my most spiritual um, experiences meeting you because this is the testament of the human spirit. So tell me a little bit, just, just briefly, because I know a lot of people, you know, when I told them that you were going to be in the show, they were like, ask him about Ninja. How, how can <laughs> he do all of this Ninja? Because it's so challenging that show. I was watching you just for research before the podcast. I was like, I mean, I did one marathon, the Vegas marathon, Jimmy. You know what I did? I took more selfies with the Elvis Presleys that are uh, in (laughs) Vegas, right? uh, Than than really running the marathon. And when I completed the marathon in four hours, obviously, because I was taking selfies with Elvis, selfies like these, the mile one, like two, I was like, I'm exhausted. (laughs) I cannot run it again. And now, you you know, you literally just motivated me to just push uh, through a little bit more. I felt, uh, you know, uh, just by by your by what you're sharing. So tell us a little bit. How did you end up in Ninja, in Ninja Warrior, American Ninja Warrior? One, two, three, four, five seasons. Five seasons. Yeah, it's uh, it, it all started uh, in twenty in twenty fifteen. I'm sorry, in twenty sixteen when my daughter. I mean, she was climbing all over everything in the house, and just to help her get that energy out, we took her to a ninja gym. And she loved the show. The show has been on for quite a few seasons already. Um, but so she loved the show. And then we brought her to a ninja gym and she started, she took off. Uh, she became actually, she became a, a very, a very uh, elite ninja herself. She competed on the, on the kids version of the show um, at a very young age. Um, but, you know, every year when the show would come on, she would say, dad, you gotta, you, you gotta try out. Dad, you gotta do this. Cause remember my kids, they didn't know me. They have never known their dad to be without Parkinson's ever since they were born. I've already been diagnosed. So they've already, all they re- can remember growing up is dad running marathons, is dad, you know, doing bike rides and under a hundred mile bike rides in under five hours. And I was fit, you know, I was thin. I was fit. I went from 240 pounds to down to 155 and, um, all they, all my kids knew from me, from what they can remember at that point in their lives is that dad, dad is super, is, is superhuman and he's doing all these things. So there's nothing that he can't do, but deep down inside for me, it's, it was terrifying because it required upper body strength, which, which for me, I, all I was doing was running. I have no upper body strength. It required balance and agility, which person with Parkinson's lack, absolutely lack. Um, so, you know, I would make all kinds of excuses not to participate until when my daughter and I were watching the show and, and we were watching and, and they, they were showing other Ninja Warrior athletes who have to deal with, who, who has to deal with their own adversities. She turned around to me and said, what's your excuse, dad? And, and that was it. That I, I realized Ooh. I had, I had no excuse. <laughs> wow. And, uh, the, the constant things that I was preaching to my kids about challenging themselves and, and not to, not to back down from challenges. And here I am telling her two or three years in a row that I can't do it because of my own challenges. Well, 
and, and, and I think that has to stop. So that was the reason I applied for the show and, 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 and apply to, to get on. And, uh, when they gave me a chance, man, it was, it was panic. Uh, yeah, I bet I have panic just by hearing you. I, I'm, <laughs> I'm already nervous, you know? <laughs> it, it, yeah, it was panic, but you know, the, the community has stepped up. They've, uh, they've, they, they've embraced me. They've, they, they've, they've supported me right from the start. You know, when I was accepted to compete on the very first season, uh, I went to the gym that my daughter was at and I told, I, I talked to all the trainers there and I said, Hey, I'm going to be competing on the show and I have no idea what I'm doing. And they didn't hesitate to jump in and teach me, you know, what I needed to learn, uh, you know, right. Even from a very beginner level at the time. But what I realized after training, uh, for, for Ninja is that all the movements is, is teaching me how to master throwing my own body weight around. Now, if you think about it, if there's a person with Parkinson's that need to learn, if there's one thing that a person with Parkinson's needs to learn is how to move their own body weight around. Right. Wow. Because now we live with this, we live with this neurological condition that is, that is slowing our bodies down and is limiting what we can do from a, uh, from a physical standpoint. What better, uh, what better training can I have than training myself to move my body around in, in, in difficult situations. And that's exactly what, what obstacle course training and Ninja warrior training is, is moving, learning to move my body in difficult situations. Mm -hmm. So, you know, I, I, again, once again, I never thought of it that way until I started doing it. And then I, I started taking that as once again, as an opportunity for me to learn how to, you know, I'm looking at living my everyday life with Parkinson's. How can I better how I move? And I can better how I move by making myself better and stronger in the gym, training for obstacles. Um, you know, so now I can skip over things and, and completely avoid, you know, uh, uh, dangerous things on the ground and, and, and change directions uh, with more confidence than I can as before I started training with Ninja. And then, you know what, I just got, and just like everything that I did, if, when I got better at it, I challenged myself to something more challenging and I just kept getting better and stronger. And, um, to this day, I'm, I'm, I'm still pushing that envelope. I'm still, still trying to find really what my limit is. That's, oh, that, that, that's so exciting for me. You know, there's something exciting about meeting people. And I, I know a couple of them, uh, like Jesse Itzler, who is an oh. ultra marathon runner too. Yeah. Chad Wright. I'm in a group with them. And these guys, they are like, there's no stop. They, they make, they, they end up like in the end and in the end line, like in the finish line are like you, what's next? Like yeah, what's, what's next? next to push the, but that, you know, spiritually wise, which is, this is the container of this. And I like very practical spirituality. I believe that spirit. I believe that spiritual. I believe that's a gift we get to give our soul and our life and honor ourselves by saying, Hey, what else can I do? We're not created like, uh, we're just, we, we, we are human beings. We have a soul. We have a mind. We can decide. We can choose. You know, when I picked up my arm, my arm was cut, right? When I had a, a car accident, a near death yeah. experience, I was dead. I picked it up. I, I, I saw it. I didn't, I, I really just thought, you know, I got to pick it up. And in the future, if I have to, you know, speak to people about using their seatbelt, that was my whole, my focus of work when I was 17. But when I pick up my arm, I said, you know, I'm alive. I, I get to pick up. I get to pick <laughs> up my arm. Incredible. Yeah. I don't get to be a victim. And I think that's the difference between people that push their limits and go to the next level. Jimmy, you are really um, uh, like, I'm just so honored that I get you in this, in the Spirituality Now podcast uh, to share um, because you are, again, I'm going to say it, a living testament of the power of the human spirit. And what you just said, like, always trying to push my limits and boundaries, that's, that's illumination. That's kind of a God encounter. And to see what, who, what created us as these incredible forces for good. You are at such a force for good. So tell me a little bit about uh, before, you know, we have a couple of minutes and I want to talk about your prime PD exercise uh, 
that you offer for um, for people with Parkinson and all of that. But tell me about a little bit about the foundation of uh, that you are, you are supporting. Where, where, where can we all support or what foundations do you support? Because sometimes people ask me, but I don't know where to donate. I don't know how to support or I don't know what to do. What are you supporting right now? What, what, what foundations, what movements? Well, you know, um, so I'm, I'm, all those, all those athletic achievements aside, which I'm, I'm, 